So when you read this script, I'm interested in how you sort of choose projects to act in. When you saw this script, what was it about it that sort of spoke to you and said, this is a project that I need to be a part of? Well, I, I was kind of stunned, uh, you know, from five or six pages in, uh, that this was um, something I related to so much, you know, both tonally, you know, and it, that it was funny and that it was also, but the humor came out of like real pathos and, uh, you know, he was a guy who was my age and he was in his 50s and one, you don't read that many scripts where the main characters in, in their 50s and uh, he's a father, as am I, um, in a constantly changing field in terms of being a historian and the crossover between academia histor history and popular history is what this guy also has is going through um, and wanting to feel relevant in that world and 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 his relationship with his father and and uh, I had a very close relationship with my father and um, so there was like wow this seemed to be like written for me you know and uh, so it was something I I, um, I I knew I would do I could tell I was going to do it before I even finished the script. It's very sad in many ways. Mm -hmm. It is very funny in other ways. That's right. Is it difficult as an actor sort of balancing those tones in a film like this, or do you sort of just let the do your job and let the director work well, about that? Well, I think you, you, you can only get the humor by playing it really real, as if you have no idea you're going to be funny. Um, I'd say the more challenging thing was um, the being depressed or having personal problems and you know, with your work and family and all, and when, when a character talks about their problems, um, it's, it, there's a, a trap to sound self-pitying or, or uh, you know, just be a whiner. And, and so that was something I really didn't want to sound like. Um, so you had to like kind of find the right balance of, you know, having the guy be genuinely sad, but having the way he's sad and what's how he's dealing with it be genuinely funny, you know? And there's a very interesting title, The Discoverers, because yeah. obviously they're on the Lewis and Clark trek discovering that, but he's discovering his family. He's discovering himself. A absolutely. Um, um, the writer, Justin Schwartz, um, who also directed it, um, really just worked that metaphor um, on every angle. You know, literally every character has a, some sort of self-discovery and the on this road and you know starts off as one kind of person and and, and ends up being somebody else um, so it was really kind of a you know an exterior discovery of you know going from one place to the next and but also an internal one you know in terms of what each of each person's going through yeah uh, justin shorts you mentioned the writer and director first time feature film director yeah you directed many feature films in your career. Are you able to, on the set, sort of, as an actor, separate the two and let him do his thing? Or are you ever sort of looking at Never. things and giving no. it? Peter Bogdanovich once told me that he's always, so you're not gonna use the shot. Don't even bother, he's I, always telling directors. I find that so distracting to, <laughs> for me as an actor, particularly in this, uh, to, to, to even think like that. I, I think if I had less trust in the director, and then maybe I'd allow myself to be distracted like that. Um, but I, 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 I love this experience because all I had to do was think about my own role. And, um, and I would only, you know, step on the work I was there hired to do by thinking about what Justin was supposed to be doing. Or, uh, you know, if I let him, it, he'd also be in a terrible position if he thought he'd hired an actor who was second guessing his directing. So no good could come out of um, uh, my doing that. Uh, I, I've been with directors where you can't help it. You go, oh my God, how did this, how did this happen? Um, but uh, this was not the case. I noticed in the credits that your daughter, Hannah, yes. is in the film. Was that a bit of nepotism? Was that something, or did she? Like blatant nepotism. <laughs> um, but you know, she, I, she, I'm so glad uh, uh, Justin um, you know, gave her the shot at it. Um, it got her a acting job. I've worked with her before. Um, I've directed her in her in a little movie that she made for, for, for her class, and I've always known how talented she was, and she's always wanted to do this, and now she's working quite a bit on her own. Yeah. Um, and this got her a SAG card. Oh, that's always so There important. we go. Yeah, exactly. 
Uh, there's a lot of great actors, including yourself in this film, but one of my favorite is David Rash. Yeah. Who you work with. I do. Tell me a little bit about working with him, and, and, and he's playing this very sort of aloof yeah. actor. Yeah. Uh, well, I've known David a long time. Okay. And we've done, uh, we've worked together, and, uh, you know, David and Becky and the, the, the or older actors besides the, 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 the kids. We've John all, McKinley. John McKinley. We've all, we've all known each other. And, in one aspect or another, you know, after you've, if you make it this long uh, in in the business, you pretty much have met everybody you're going to meet, and uh, so so we kind of arrived with a lot of history, and everybody knew how funny David was, and he's just as funny off screen as he is on screen, um, and it was just great. And Stuart Margolin, uh, I've known a really long time since like 1980. He was one of the first working actors I ever I ever met. Um, so, um, so we, it, it was great. There was a, like a lot of history and I think it added to the chemistry of, of the actors being on a, on a road trip going through an adventure, you know, like this. Yeah. Um, I'm curious because, as you mentioned, you've been doing this as an actor and as a director, as a producer for a very long time. Mm -hmm. uh, distinguished career. How has the business changed? Because it's changed so much, I think, through technology over the last few years, shooting digital instead of film, the way ed the editing process is done now, but then also marketing with Twitter and yeah, Facebook yeah. And, and even VOD instead of a theatrical release. Yeah, it, it, it's, it's changed so much that I think For people... For the better or the worse? I, I don't think people know yet. Okay. Um, I know that there's um, uh, certainly a lot more movies, um, but not as many places to show them. And it's very hard to keep in a you know, a movie uh, in a theater for, it can be a really good one, but it's hard to keep, get an audience in it, in, into the theater and keep it there for, for a long run. Um, you know, I think video on demand is going to address that. Um, but that's, a you know, an animal in the, in the works too, because it's, um, it started off being a dumping ground for movies. And now I think the perception is slowly changing. I mean, the only thing that hasn't changed is perception. So uh, once people can figure out how to sell it and get the right perception, um, things will be back on track. But, but I, I still think people are trying to, you know, deal with the alchemy of it all. Yeah. Last question I'll ask you. Uh, looking back on your career, is there an acting performance, a film, a directorial uh, effort of yours that you look at that you're personally especially proud of that maybe people haven't seen as much as you would have liked or is there a project in particular that you look very fondly upon yeah um yeah it, it's not not just one in particular but uh uh in each division of um uh, as a producer it's one film but i would say as a director uh i directed a film called fierce people that uh I, I think turned out really, really well, and it it, it had a um, it, it was one of the first uh, uh, catastrophes of of release, um, you know, with uh, an independent release being in, with a major studio and uh, where the previous kind of movies had failed. So you know, it just, it was just one of those things. So it didn't get the audience that you know we'd hoped, and it got held back. And the perception in those days now it happens all the time. If, if you make a movie and then it's released a year and a half later, it's suddenly, the, it's usually the lead sentence in a review. Um, now that happens all the time. Uh, so um, so I, I, I've always been very proud of that movie and particularly the cast. I mean, it's Kristen Stewart and Chris Evans and Anton Yelchin. And I mean, there's not one person who didn't go on to become somebody incredible. Um, but it's a, really, it's a really good movie that, um, I was, I'm very proud of, but I always felt it got overlooked. Yeah, well, we encourage people to check that out. Great, I'm glad I mentioned it. As well, absolutely. Griffin, thank you so much. Thank for you.